praise the Lord. All right, glory to God, amen. Just a few minutes late, we had some technical difficulties, and that's why we always like to remind you, blessed are the flexible, for they shall not get bent out of shape. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you for our tech team back there working to make this happen, man. I'll tell you what, it'll be reflected in your Christmas bonus, Christmas in July, so glory to God. What a team we got, man. We got a team right here, I'll tell you. So good evening and welcome, welcome everybody. We're glad you could join us. Praise the Lord. We're going to start off in Hebrews 11 with one verse of Scripture. And so from Hebrews 11, then we'll, uh, we'll go all, all the way backwards to Hebrews chapter 10. So you want to find your way over to Hebrews 11, and I'll invite your attention with me to one verse to start this off. Hebrews 11 and in verse number 6. But without faith, it is somewhat difficult to please him. No, it actually doesn't say that. The Bible makes it very, very clear that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now, we did not write this. I'm just simply bringing you in on this um, important key. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a disappointer of them that diligently seek him. No, it doesn't say that either. It says he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So without faith, the Bible tells us that we, we walk by faith and not by sight. The just shall live by faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. Faith is a very important subject. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. The trouble is that there are um, Christians worldwide and in every generation uh, who really don't understand the operation of faith. And so we have a mission or an assignment uh, to build faith for life, uh, is what we do. Uh, we are building faith. We are helping to, to build faith for your life, for you to live your best life. The best life that God, the best life being the one that God has ordained and created for you. He has a life or a plan for you. There is a plan for you. And so faith is an important subject. It is central. And with, the, with an understanding uh, to uh, the operation of faith, with the understanding of how faith works, you can get to anywhere that you need to go. Because faith works exactly the same for every area uh, of your life, okay? So without faith, it's impossible to please him. Now, Back all the way up to chapter 10, which for me is really not too far. Probably not too far for you either. Let me show you this in Hebrews chapter 10. Praise God, it says this, and I love this, in verse 17, And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Isn't that a good one? Yeah. Their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say his flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God, let us, verse 22 now, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Here's where we want to get to, verse number 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Hold fast the profession of our faith. God's word translation puts it this way. We must continue to hold firmly to our declaration of faith. The New Living says, let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm. And the Amplified Bible puts it this way, let us seize and hold tightly the confession of our hope without wavering. Seize and hold tightly. The trouble is, there are too many Christians who are seizing and holding tightly to their fears. Seizing and holding tightly to their failures or their sins and their weaknesses 
The Bible doesn't tell you to do that. It tells you to hold tightly. It tells you to hold firmly and to continue to hold firmly to your declaration of faith. You know what you believe. You know what you believe. And, and here's the thing. <clears throat> we actually are holding things in our lives by what we say. The confession of our mouth. The things that we say we believe and the things that we are speaking. We are actually holding things in our lives, whether it's good or bad. Or we are releasing things, whether it's good or bad. Do you know that you can release a good thing simply by the carelessness of your mouth? And then it disappears and goes bye-bye. And you wonder why. Oh my. See, our words do so much more than just communicate. Our words create a response. That's exactly what's happening. Our words are creating a response. Now, you can make a note of this. Proverbs 18.21, just jot it down. Proverbs 18.21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Now, the tongue, obviously, in and of itself, as a part of your body, as an organ, if you will, does not have the power of death and life because any more than a, a piece of flesh does, right? Unless, of course, you choke on your tongue and you can't breathe, well then, you know. So what the scripture is actually saying is that the words that you speak carry with it the power of death and life. Listen, I, when I was a kid, we used to hear this, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Well, that's not true, folks. Words do more damage than sticks and stones. Can't get free from the words that were spoken. That's hard, isn't it? You know, if you get, beat, if you get a good stiff beaten, somebody throws you a beaten, you can get over that. But words, they just have the ability to stay with you, whether it's good or bad. Now, I do want to invite your attention now over to James chapter 3, and you will find that very close to Hebrews. In fact, it's the very next book. James chapter 3. I made the statement that what we say, the words that we speak, are actually holding things in our lives or releasing things from our lives and the words that we speak do more than communicate. They actually create a response. James chapter 3. This is really important, folks. James chapter 3. Um, let's look at verse... Let's just start in verse 1. James 3, 1. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. <clears throat> No, I can say amen to that, I'll tell you. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Bridle the whole body. How? By being a perfect man, by controlling what you say. Listen, read it again. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Now listen, he's going to explain this. Look at verse 3. Behold, let me explain this to you. We put bits in the horse's mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. How do you control the whole animal? Through a bit in the mouth. Well, what does the bit do? Well, there's something called what? The, ultimately, you have the reins, don't you, on the horse? And you can cause a horse to go left. You can cause a horse to go right. You can have a horse go quicker, slow down, stop, turn around, pick a bale of cotton. Oh, Mandy, pick a bale of hay. Basically, he's saying the same way that you control the entire horse with a little bit is the same way you control the entire horse body with a little bit called the tongue. Watch this. It continues. Ready? Verse 4. Terry and uh, Dennis, you'll like this one. Behold also the ships. You guys know a little something about ships, don't you? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Behold also the ships, 
which though they be so great, so great, it's amazing to see these amazing vessels so large floating on top of the water. They're so great and they're driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. By comparison, what turns about the ship is small in comparison. And you can control the whole vessel. And the King James says helm here. But verse 5, even so the tongue. What are we talking about? We're not talking about horses. We're not talking about ships. We're talking about your life. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue, verse 6, is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth, watch, the whole body. And it sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beasts and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Kind of makes you really want to watch your words, doesn't it? Therewith, verse 9, bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Verse 10 tells you, out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not, uh, ought not so to be. OMG. No wonder why we're we are told to hold fast to the confession of what we profess, or what we say, what is our faith, what is important to us, what we believe. Hold fast to that. Keep saying the same thing. Amen. Over and over and over, because the words that I am speaking will either hold things in my life or it will kick things out of my life, good and bad. And when people hold fast and they hold tightly to their confession of their weakness or their pain. Listen, God's not telling you to deny and act like the pain. He's not saying, oh, no, just uh, you're mistaken. You know, there, there's no there's no such thing as pain right now. Just just act like. No, no, no. Listen, if you're in pain, you know that you are. But don't keep confessing it and speaking it and rehearsing it. Because it's holding things into your life. It's, it's fact, in fact, it's attracting more negative stuff. That's right. I'm always in so much pain. My back is always hurt. Listen, I, I don't tell you most of the time when I'm not feeling good because then you get sick and tired of hearing it. <laughs> I just get up and just press through. I get up, I dress up, I show up, and I say, listen, I believe... That by his stripes, with his wounds, I am healed and made whole. I believe that. Well, then I guess I better do something about it. What? Speak accordingly. I believe that all of my sins are washed away and forgiven. I will not continue to confess my past failures because as far as I am concerned, the Bible tells me he has removed all of my sin. Gone. He doesn't even remember them, so why do we? As far as the east is from the west, that's how far he's removed it from us. And we have people who rehearse over and over and over the wrong, the hurt, the pain, the weakness, the failure. It's so vitally important that you learn this lesson because without faith, it is impossible to please him. So if you're trying to live a victorious Christian life apart from strong faith, you will be at a disadvantage. And there are people who are trying to live a strong Christian life apart from strong faith, and it's not working very well. I'm amazed at how many people don't understand the basics. Now, this, this is not to, to criticize, absolutely not. This, this really is a blight against the church. It's a black eye for the church to say, well, what the heck are we teaching people? What are we cultivating? Are we more interested in performances? Programming? Or are we interested in teaching the word so that the believer can become grounded in the word of God 
and build a strong life of faith, building faith for life. That's what this church is doing. In Romans, let me show you this. Romans chapter 10. And if we have time from Romans, we're going to head over to Mark. We may have to, this may be a, um, a two-parter. And you know what? Don't ever, don't ever get impatient or upset when I say that because, listen, the more I hear it, the more revelation I get, which means the more revelation you get. Glory to God. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So in Romans chapter 10, this is interesting because I said to you, I made a statement that faith works the same in every area of your life. And in Romans chapter 10, it says this, verse number, this is Romans 10, 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. Notice it's in two places. Did you catch that? Hmm. Wow. That is the word of faith which we preach. Wow. Which we preach. What are you preaching? Well, I preach the word of faith. Some people preach the word of legalism. Some people preach the word of condemnation. Some people preach the word of inclusion. Should I continue or better stop while I'm ahead? The word of faith is what we preach. I don't care what you identify as. I don't care what you call yourself. I want to teach you how to have strong faith. What you do behind your closed doors, that is your business. I don't want you seeing what I do behind closed doors. Ain't none of your business. <laughs> right? Yes. Glory to God. Look at this. Verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth. Here's this confession business. If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You have to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you have to believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and the Bible says you will be saved. It doesn't say anything about what denominational title you ascribe to. Look at verse 10. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. How do I get right with God? It's a matter of the heart. That's how you get right with God. If you're looking to get right with God, it's a matter of your heart. God knows your heart. You don't have to do everything perfect. You don't always have to say the right thing. You don't always have to think the right thing. You don't always have to act right. But you know what? If you and God are okay in your heart and you believe, you believe that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. God sent the Lord Jesus to die for you. With the heart man believes unto righteousness. But notice this, with the mouth, watch this now, confession is made unto salvation. Now I like to say it this way. This is real important that you get this. When I talk about salvation, salvation is an all-inclusive word. There's that word inclusion. See, what happens is the spirit of Antichrist gets into politics, gets into the mix, and it confuses people. And so the issues, what they say are the issues, are not really the issues. You have to be very careful and pay attention. With the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Salvation includes, salvation includes prosperity, protection, deliverance. It's an all-inclusive word. Or we could say it this way. All of the ingredients of salvation, all of the ingredients that are in what we call salvation can only be accessed by what you believe and what you speak. If you don't believe that it is God's will to heal you, you ain't never getting healed. Oh boy. And, and worse yet, you say that you believe it is, but then you confess or you speak that, well, I sure hope he does it, you ain't getting healed. Now, how do you know this? Because, trust me, <laughs> I've been doing this long enough to have learned at least a couple of things in life about how faith works. There are too many people that go around and they give lip service or affirmation, mental assent, and they, they, they talk a good talk, but their walk is anything but right. 
If you believe that it is the, now here's the thing. If you believe that it is the will of God for you to be saved and to have your sins removed and cleansed, well, well, good. But now you have to do something. It says, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth. So now you got to say, Father, thank you that Jesus died for me. Not just the world. Now this is personal. He died for me. And his blood that was shed at Calvary removes every sin that I ever had, ever, ever did, ever thought of doing, or ever will do. That's mine. And, and the Bible says to hold fast, to hold tightly, and keep speaking that. Father, thank you that the blood of Jesus is enough. Thank you that the blood of Jesus is enough. Thank you that I am cleansed, I am washed, I am new. Don't confess failure and weakness and fear and misery and question marks. Well, I sure hope God's going to take me into heaven when I die. Can anybody ever really know for sure? Well, based upon what the Word of God says, yes, you can be. But you have to side in with the Word and not what you heard some alleged preacher saying or somebody who thinks they know better than God themselves. And so, in order to access the ingredients, in order to access what Jesus purchased for you, it works the same for everything. It works the same for finances. It works the same for peace of mind. It works the same for healing for your body. All of us can relate on some level. All of us know what I'm talking about. You know, and, and, and what I want to do, we started late. We got just a couple of minutes. I, I'm, I'm just going to be able to maybe introduce this subject in Mark 11. Um, so let, let me show you this in Mark 11 because I, I want to connect this for you. This is important because your faith is important. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So you might as well make it your business to grow in faith. Not grow in programming, right? Not grow, listen, not grow in popularity either. Because I can assure you and promise you that if you stay the straight and narrow and do it God's way, you won't be popular all the time. That's just the way it works. That's the way I have found it. You know, I mean, and you have to, you just got to settle it in your mind. I can't serve two masters. So stop trying. Just pick one and stay the course. I mean, either you're going to, either you're going to do it God's way or not. Not when it's convenient. I mean, you, is this your, is this your personal conviction or not? Right? Praise the Lord. So in Hebrews, uh, I'm sorry, Mark. <laughs> Hebrews, yeah, we started in Hebrews. But in Mark chapter 11, I love this, and we'll just maybe just have time to just introduce this. Uh, this might get a little tricky, so I, I'm sure I'm going to have to come back after it. But I love this because in my Bible, in the margin of my Bible, Mark 11, 22, um, King Jimmy says, Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. In the margin of my Bible, it tells me, or the original language, it says, have the faith of God. Wow, have the faith of God. You mean, if faith is important and it is, then I can have the faith of God and operate in it? Yes, this is what we've been trying to tell you. And Jesus is about to show you how faith works. Jesus is about to show you how faith works. And if you haven't paid attention up to this point, pay attention now. You ready? Breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. Here we go. Make an adjustment if you have to. Mark 11. 23, for verily, Jesus is saying, pay attention, I'm going to show you how the faith of God works. For verily I say unto you that whosoever, are you a whosoever? Yes. Yep, then this, this applies to you. Say, this applies to me. This applies to me. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, what is a mountain? A mountain represents something that is bigger than you. Something that seemingly is immovable permanent that isn't going anywhere a mountain is could be a problem it could be an illness it could be anything that's bigger than you are whosoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he saith 
Now I want you to notice what is not mentioned in verse 23. Does anybody want to take a guess what's not mentioned in verse 23? The word prayer. You don't see the word pray or prayer in verse 23. Do you? No. Because he says at the end of verse 23, he shall have whatsoever he saith. He doesn't say whatsoever he prayeth. He doesn't say whatsoever he thinketh. It doesn't even say whatsoever he wanteth. <laughs> he shall have whatsoever he says. Prayer is not in verse 23, but it is in verse 24. Therefore, verse 24 says, I say unto you what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So faith will work without praying. <gasps> That's sacrilegious. Well, verse 23 will confirm what I just said. The mountain will obey you if you don't doubt in your heart, but believe what you say shall come to pass, you're going to have whatever you say. Well, what did he say to the mountain? He said, you tell that mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea. Only the sea is big enough to swallow up a mountain and leave no evidence that it was even there in your life. So your faith, which is so important, will work without even praying anything. Just go ahead and speak to that problem. In other words, verse 23, he isn't telling you to beg and plead and reason and rationalize. He's not telling you to even pray about the mountain. He's telling you, speak to it. See, we've got to develop this fight. We've got to develop this, this, uh, this intense passion uh, uh, about dealing with these problems everywhere that are just popping up all over the place. Things are going from bad to worse. Now you have a variant of this virus that you have to worry about, and then you have companies and organizations who are making it mandatory. If you want to re retain your employment, you will be vaccinated. Is that even legal? And, and truthfully, if you think about the HIPAA Act of 1996, is it even legal for people to ask you your medical history and share personal information? I can't even ask about, I cannot even inquire about you at the hospital. If you were in the hospital and I wanted to go and check on you and, and I call and say, hey, I'm Pastor Gary, uh, I'm checking on one of my uh, members of my congregation. Can you please tell me if Joe Blow is here? We can't tell you that. Well, how am I supposed to know if Joe Blow's there? Well, I don't know. I guess you better come up and figure it out. Now that they, you know, let me, you know, they can allow one person or whatever. It gets a little bit complicated. The point I'm making is that maybe, just maybe, we're doing too much praying and not enough speaking. Oh, I can't believe I just said that in church. I might get smitten. No, I'm not going to get smitten because Prayer is not even mentioned in verse 23. It is in verse 24. But notice the order of things in verse 24. You thought I was being sacrilegious before. Wait until I get sacrilegious now with this one. You ready? Verse 24. Here it is. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, wait to believe that you receive them until after you have them. No, he said, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and then you shall have them. Wait a minute. i got to believe before I have? That's what verse 24 just told you. Hello. I told you most people don't understand the operations of faith. As uh, my little grandson Harrison says, I told you, Pa. I told you. I told you, Pa. Well, I'm telling you, most Christians do not understand the operations of faith because verse 24 says the believing comes before the receiving. We've got it mixed up. We want to have it in our hand and then we'll believe it. But that's not what verse 24 says. So either you will get biblical with your approach or you won't. The choice is yours. <sighs> this is so good. Huh. Oh, my I told you that words will bring things into your life or release things from your life, right? 
If you say that you believe, because you got to believe in your heart, but then you got to confess it with your mouth, that's how you activate the ingredients, is you got to speak it. Don't, it's not, you can't just say, oh, it's so precious, I'll just keep it in my heart and retain all these things. No, your faith has to be released. If you pray and ask God for something, Lord, whatever it is, you know, help, uh, you know, Bubba get a, get a good job. He, he needs a job and, you know, well, right now there shouldn't be any trouble getting a job because people don't want to work. <laughs> but help Bubba get, and, and be specific with it. So once you pray for Bubba to get a, 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 the job of his, he's at, he wants to do this or do that, then your course of action should be, after you say amen, because amen means so be it, now, your course of action should be, Father, I'm so grateful that Bubba has the job of his dreams, Lord God, that you have moved on his behalf, Lord. Thank you, Father God, that you give him the desires of his heart. Father, I just thank you. And see, what a different attitude now. Now you can just have a celebration. Uh, well, but Bubba doesn't have the job yet. But the Bible says you got to believe first. How would you act? If Bubba had the job, I would be happy. Exactly. Well, start acting that way. How would you be if God took care of that need you were? Start acting that way. Whatever it is. See, there's a, there's a whole different, there's a whole different twist to this now. Because we're praying and we're begging and we're asking God to intercede and to heal our land and we're waiting for a miracle. We're waiting for something magical. I don't know what we're waiting for. How about we just start acting like? God has already healed our land. God has already responded. How about we start acting like things are coming into line? And let me tell you this. I got to tell you this, though. I don't want to upset the apple cart. So rather than, you, rather, rather than you approach God like a beggar, I got to tell you, let's temper this and balance this because things are rapidly concluding on planet Earth. You ain't changing that. See, the future for the church is looking so good that you should be excited and happy. But Lord, I want to thank you. While my future's looking so bright, it don't look so good for the world, but I want to thank you, Father, for blessing my country. I want to thank you that the United States of America is blessed and prosperous. I want to thank you for protecting this nation. I want to thank you for watching whatever it is you have to say and declare. Instead of begging and pleading. Listen, we're going out at the Trump with the shout of the archangel, we're going out of here, man. And they're going to get left behind. The devil's getting this world ready for the revealing of the son of perdition. The devil's getting the world, the world ready for the Antichrist. The Holy Spirit's busy getting us ready <laughs> to go see Jesus. It's really good for us, but really bad for them. But your attitude should be one of celebration and victory because we are more than a conqueror. So as you pray and you ask God for whatever it is you're asking him to do, once you say amen, take on a whole different attitude. My Bible says to believe before you receive. Yeah, but that's kind of goofy. Well, I, take it up with him. Tell him his Bible's goofy. Good luck. Because <laughs> you ain't changing the word. Well, praise the Lord. I think we ought to continue Sunday, so I hope you can join us. Yeah. Praise God, man. I'm excited now. I'm ready to do some preaching. Woo, hallelujah. Well, let me, uh, let me pray. And you know what? We're going to receive an offering. So this is going to be a prayer for the offering, a prayer for you. And uh, I got to just say this because I, I know I got to do a better job with this. I, I, I just got to let you know that I, I really value and appreciate those of you who get behind us financially to help us do what we're doing. And so anybody can give to this ministry. Anybody, anywhere can give to this ministry. And um, it's important that you know that we appreciate that. That we value what you do because we couldn't do it without you. And it's, it's, it's okay for me to say, listen, if you want to get involved and help us do what we do, please consider giving. Amen. How do, how do they do that? Does anybody know how somebody can give to this ministry if they're not sitting there like you are? Well, they can go to, uh, to the website, right? They can give through what medium, what method? I mean, because I'm, I'm not, what is it? Write a, check, put it in the mail. Ah, write a check and put it in the mail. Send it by carrier pigeon. PayPal. 
Yeah, amen. So I'm trying to do what I was trying to say. I'm trying to do a better job of understanding the methods and the ways that people can help support because technology has made it possible for people to give from anywhere. It's awesome. What a great thing, right? Technology is for the church. But, but your pastor has to get up on this technology and stop being a dinosaur stuck in the uh, dark ages. So my kids have been warning me for a long time, you know. So glory to God. So let me pray for you, pray for the offering, pray for the church, and then uh, we'll receive the offering and, and we'll, let, um, we'll let our virtual uh, congregation, is that right, virtual congregation go? Are they virtual? Yeah, they're virtual. But they're real. But they're vir- <laughs> Praise God. Father, I want to thank you that you supply every need, Lord. I thank you that you promised us as we sow, we reap. If we give, we receive. Father, I thank you that we cannot outgive you. And I want to thank you that your sowing system works. It works. The seed is guaranteed, Lord. So I thank you for faithfulness. I thank you for generosity. I thank you, Father God, for meeting every need in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. I bless you. I love you. Look forward to seeing you real soon. 